A few days before Einstein's birthday, which coincides with Israel's National Science Day, I suggested to anybody who so wished to pose questions to Einstein, promising that I shall do my best to answer them. This appeal generated a great deal of interest and excitement. We received about 300 responses from many countries around the world, including such countries as Syria and Egypt and Iraq, Turkey and Albania, India and Japan. The responses came to us in different languages, such as English, of course, Hebrew, Arabic, French, and Spanish. Many of the questions included birthday wishes, expressions of appreciations, and even requests for advice on a variety of issues, including personal affairs. Some of the questions were addressed directly to Albert Einstein's, others were addressed to me. Obviously, I cannot answer all the questions in a reasonable span of time. I have chosen a number of questions that relate directly to Einstein's work and to his personality. I am grateful to everybody who participated in this initiative and to the Albert Einstein fan club on a Facebook. I would like to thank especially to Faisal Alwan al Mutar from Iraq, 18 years old, who added to his questions also warm wishes for the Hebrew University for its success and expressed his hope that one day he will be a student at the Hebrew University. Dear Faisal, this is also our hope and desire. Now to answer the questions. In response to Uri Raves, two questions. There is a myth that young Albert did not do well in school, but we have a high school certificate, certificate which proves the opposite. He gets the highest marks in all the science topics. We do not know when Albert decided to become a scientist, but we do know that when he was 12 years old, he read popular books in science, he also owned a little book in geometry where on the margins he added his remarks and his own proofs to some of the theorems. When he was 16 years old, he uh, submitted to his uncle, an electrical engineer, an essay which included certain problems that concerned him later and were the starting point for his paper on the special theory on relativity in 1905. In this context, I would also like to mention the question of Madeleine Alverman, who asks Albert, what made you stand up to a very authoritative school system that did not allow individual thinking? It is true that Einstein did not like the almost militaristic discipline that was part of the school system in Munich. That is why he dropped out from that school, enrolled in a school in Switzerland, and there he did very well and also was liked by his, by his students. There is a number of questions about Einstein's attitude to the Jewish people and to the state of Israel. Uh, Louis Treby, yes, you are right. In 1938, Einstein expressed objections to a Jewish state with borders and an army. He thought that something like that is not compatible with the values of Judaism. Although he was then already a part of the Zionist movement, he adopted the notion that the goal of Zionism should be to establish a, a cultural center at the place where the Jewish people appeared for the first time on the historical arena. That attitude changes, changed toward the 40s when the Jewish community in Palestine was struggling for independence. This may also be an answer 
to Anas El Adli, who asked about Einstein's attitude to the, Jew to the Jewish state. Jawad Mabud asked why did Einstein refuse the offer to become the second president of the state of Israel. He was offered that after the death of Israel's first president, Chaim Weizmann, in a very moving letter to the then Israel's Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion, Albert Einstein said that he regretfully rejects this offer because he knows very little about nature, he knows nothing about human beings. Rodney Aho asks when and how shall we know if a mass out there in outer space disappears or moves, changes position. Einstein's general theory of relativity predicts the existence of gravitational waves that are produced by masses which collapse, which change their position in space, which rotate around each other. Gravitational waves propagate at the speed of light. Today we do not have detectors which would detect gravitational waves because these effects are extremely weak. Yet physicists are confident that gravitational waves exist. And this is the means by which such information is propagated in space. Once we develop such detectors, we will be, we will be able to probe outer space, maybe even back to the origin of the universe. This ends the first part of my answers. In the second part, I shall respond to questions related to God and religion, time travel, love, and Einstein's hair.